All right, chip of the day. Chip of the day is a 74LS139, a very popular uh, chip back in the days of 8-bit microprocessors stuff to do address decoding. Um, you'll see it a lot in address decoding. What is it? It's a uh, dual two-line to four-line decoder. So two lines in, uh, four lines out. So let's take a look at um, let's take a look at a truth table here, okay? So you have the, the two lines input, low, low, or a low, high, so, so it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, but back in the day, they put L's and H's instead of zeros and 1's. Um, so you might see that on old data sheets. And so here you can see that if it's, if it's a 0, 0, then the uh, Y0 goes low. So it's, it's a low true logic on the output. And uh, so basically it, it, it counts along. We saw another chip uh, similar to this, but it was a 8-bit uh, chip. But this is a dual 4-bit chip, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can imagine you have four banks of RAM, and you can enable these four banks of RAM, and uh, you use the address uh, on the, uh, these inputs, and then it will select the right chip or the right bank or whatever like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, bring in uh, the inputs A and B, and then the outputs will be Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3. And I'm going to hook up some LEDs so we can watch them. Okay, there's also an enable pin, so that can be used as a third input to the address decoding, because the, the enable pin also has to, be, has to be logic high, or logic low, it has to be logic low. Okay, so let's take a look at our circuit down here. Get it in the picture. All right, so here's our chip. It's my ceramic chip back from the old days. Uh, it doesn't even have the LS marking on it. It's an old HP chip, 1820 dash, uh, what is it, 1281, something like that. Anyway, um, so here uh, are the, just ignore the other LEDs. The first four LEDs are the ones we're interested in. So right now the Y0 is asserted because we're inputting 0, 0. And if I change the A input, there we go. Now we've gone, now we've gone, uh, we're inputting, instead of zero, zero, we're now inputting uh, A is one and B is zero, okay? And let me change that so the B is high. Now we've gone to the third one. And when they're both high, it goes to the fourth one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And um, then we have an enable pin, which is down here, and if I, disable it, then it doesn't get asserted, okay? And so pin one is the enable pin needs to be asserted. So anyway, there you go. Uh, it's a nice little chip. Um, and like I said, you'll see a lot of these on 8-bit uh, uh, microprocessor designs. I've used quite a few of these. Um, and if you troubleshoot like S100 systems and stuff, you'll see a lot of uh, the uh, 139 chips of various flavors, either uh, 74 or 139 or an LS part back in the fancy days when it got real fancy. The, I remember it was a really, really big deal when the LS parts came around. Um, the LS parts were so much nicer. They drew so much less current. Um, we were all excited about those. And then another big wave hit when they were HC parts or HCT parts. Those were just a great invention as well. So I remember both of those big waves. Okay, so chip of the day was the uh, Texas Instrument. Uh, who made this one? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember whose insignia that is. Anyway, it was, wasn't TI. This is a TI data sheet. It was an LS139. Here's the pinout. Um, the uh, enable is also, they're, they're calling G. You have the A and B inputs. And then there's two different, uh, it's a dual package, right? So. Um, there's one device that are all labeled ones and one device that's all labeled twos. And the pinout is actually pretty nice on this part because all the one things are on one side and all of the two things are on the other side. So they did pay some, some attention to the, uh, to the pinout on this IC. So, uh, so that was pretty nice. And then these useless uh, diagrams here that I really, really hate. But anyway, there you go. Chip of the day, LS139.